spider web. It's chilly out, a little foggy, raining on and off. The ground is soaking wet. I would say this is a perfect day. This looks to be a good spot. Tree there. Tree there. Nothing up there that is threatening. Is that, well, ah, that'll be all right. And we are 10 foot from the river. Yep, this is gonna be a great little spot. I lucked out on this one. I got the shelter set up just in time because it is raining and it's coming through the canopy. Let's take a look at it real quick. We're tied off to that tree. That tree, it's not taut. I'm just using the, see how it's not tied at all, but I'm just using the springiness of the tree to keep tension on the shelter. We went that direction too. I've got it at an angle. This is our high side, which means the water will run down this way and run down this cordage here. For some reason, I'm missing a bunch of cordage, and I don't know why. I'll have to figure that one out. And the back, we have it tied out there. We've got a nice good angle for the water to run off. I am missing whoop, my drip lines. For some reason, is that spider? Nope, it's not. Okay, I'll fix that later. For some reason, the poly rope works better than the 550 as a drip line, but I'm going to work with what I got, so I'm hoping... This will act as a drip line. That will act as a drip line. And then all else fails, that will act as a drip line because it'll hit this and go down. And then maybe there before it comes down to my back. But we're set up and dry. I swear to God, it quit raining briefly, but it started back up again. Not a big deal. I did get a fire started though. And all I need is a hot bed of coals for cooking later. This wood, it just freaking soaked, friends. Uh, I used one of my world's famous egg drop fire starters to get it going. And once I get the bed of coals, I'm going to cover it up with a bunch of wood and hopefully the rain will stay off of it. Hopefully it won't start pouring. Let's see how that works out. I was going to eat some sausage rockets. I put them in this pack at the beginning of summer. And I looked in there, they expired, oh wow, May 25th, 24, but the can is not bloated, it's still sunk down in the bottom. You know what, what the heck, let's see, it's still good there, there's no green on them, I smell them. I nice, smell darn good. Let's do it. Don't you fall over. <laughs> it could have ruined my day. Got a liberated fork from the gas station, I think. Let's find out if they're still good. That's the worst that could happen. <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on. Really? <sighs> I'm on camera. Let's do this right here. Looks good. Let's find out. Hmm. Tastes fine to me. There is definitely going to be a bloopers reel at the end of this video. <laughs> this is going to be take seven. Some funny things have been happening. It's been a while since I've been in front of the camera. There's a small break in the weather before the next front comes in. I figured this is going to be the perfect time to uh, do the main video here. Whoa! And yes, it has been a while, friends, so kind of bear with me. I might stumble quite a bit. Fun fact, Carl and I were talking back and forth, and he goes, how long has it been since you've been out, you know, in the woods? And I said, wow, it's been, I want to say since winter. And he goes, how much dust is on your pack? And I went over there, grabbed it, and I was like, oh! It was just covered with dust and dog fur. It was a nightmare to clean up. She's still not clean. That's, so that's how the name of Dust on the Pack came about. Now, first I'd like to thank everybody that stuck around. 
because I know I haven't put out any videos in quite a while since the begin well, and since the beginning or in the middle of winter in December I think or maybe January. I don't know. It's been a minute. And I'd like to thank all the new subscribers that came on. I didn't know YouTube still had me in the rotation. I'm glad they did. And I do believe I hear the rain coming again. <laughs> Owe you an explanation of where I have been. This is not a pity video. I don't need, you know, any condolences or any, you know, really help with anything. I just need to let you know where I've been. I guess I will be making a comeback when things work out to my advantage. First, work is kicking my butt, advantage. I don't know if that's a good word to use, but we're gonna stay with it. Like I said, been a minute. <laughs> Work's kicking my butt. At the time, I cannot find anybody that wants to work. So I have to do everything myself, which is not a big deal. I'm used to doing it, and at least me doing it, I know it's done right. So that's kind of kept me busy, but some other things have happened. My mom, as you know, uh, two years ago, August, my dad passed away. She's not ha didn't handle it very well, and I was a little concerned. And then she got better, and things were doing great. And now she's doing fine now, a little bit. Uh, the other day, she did fall down in the house, and I was a little concerned about that because I wasn't there. I don't live there with her, and she refuses to carry the life alert around. I don't know why. She's independent. But I'm concerned about that, so I've kind of, you know, been taking care of her along with all the neighbors. And it's getting to the point where I really don't want to have to do it, but it might actually be time to consider an in, in what do they call it, in-home health care nurse, just to keep an eye on, eye on her. And I'd like to keep her in the house as long as possible, because that's her house. She's comfortable there, all her stuff's there, and that's her comfort zone. So I've been kind of busy with that, but that's really not been the big distraction. A friend of mine, uh, Steve, I can't, I'm not gonna mention his last name. We pretty much grew up together. We worked together. We were kind of brothers. He's been fighting cancer for about 10 years or so. Uh, four, four and a half months back, he called me. He says, I'm done. And I knew exactly what that meant. And I understand why, because he's been through every treatment and he's been in so much pain. His average pain level was a nine. I can't handle pain level of a four and I don't know how he did it. I guess it's just after a while you build up an immunity to it. Hmm. It hasn't been a while since I talked about this. Well, I really haven't talked to you about anybody. But, uh, anyway, cotton mouth. Drink break. <laughs> he told me that I, I knew what was going to happen and I knew why he did it so I decided I'm going to spend as much time with him as possible and I did they uh, finally took him to the hospice house or hosp I guess it's a hospice house or hospice facilities and when he came in there they said he wouldn't last two days well Steve being the fighter he is he lasted three weeks well two and a half weeks and some people say cancer beat him and I'm gonna be honest with you he beat, beat cancer he went on his own terms on his own time and we always used to joke that he'd always be late for his funeral and he was and he was happy when he left so and that really uh, set me back yeah we did have the memorial service and everything or the celebration of life for him and all that Kind of that really set me way back and I just wasn't motivated to do anything. So with that happening and still taking care of my mom to the point where you know I'm starting to get concerned it might be time for it to go to a different direction. That has really kept me busy, friends. I mean including the work situation. And so I just had to back away from the social media and shooting the videos. I hate doing it, but you know, sometimes friends, family comes first and you have to take care of your family no matter what. I have no clue what that was. It just fell out of the sky. This has been the most oddest day ever and I'm loving it. A lot of strange things are happening today. That's where I've been, you know, hanging out with my friend. Uh, 
and uh, you know taking care of my mom and of course working my butt off which actually is kind of down on the scale and taking care of my own home and uh, hanging out with Jessica that's really kept me pretty busy uh, will I make a comeback yes I can't I'm not going nowhere I don't want to leave I got so much stuff I want to share with you some of it's gonna be fun there's gonna be laughter me making mistakes like today <laughs> it's been just hilarious I, I, I'm thinking they'll probably start picking up hopefully the end of fall in the winter as things stabilize with my mom because she's not to the point yet but she's close so I just want to be ahead of the game and I know I keep repeating that for some reason I don't know why now, I'm gonna leave this in it's gonna be raw I'm not gonna edit it out since I've been this far in uh, I've got a uh, shelter I want to build out of a tarp and some sticks. I've already got it drawn up. I've picked the area with all the materials to build it at. Of course, now it's going into deer season. i got to be careful. Also, I want to definitely, will be the next video, go back to the shelter I built a while back and see if it's still there. It's been unattended all summer, and I'm hoping nobody found it. And I want to get there before rifle season starts because there's a hunter's camp not too far away from there. So that's what's going on. I appreciate you. Pre, pre, <laughs> appreciate your patience on this. But I will be making the comeback. Thanks for sticking around. My uh, plans for today is I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to take a nap when that next storm rolls in. Well, I'm probably going to eat first because these coals are starting to look really, really good. And that's all I need. I don't need any more fire than that. Yeah, those are back in. When that burns down, I'm probably going to make make me a little grub or something. I'm not sure yet. So I just wanted to let you know what's going on and uh, how things are going at the moment. You know what? <laughs> it's got buzzed by the biggest bug. <laughs> Jesus, man. I've got a perfect set of coals here for cooking. But now I've got myself in a bit of the dilemma. I gotta make a decision. I checked the radar just a little while ago and you can kind of see it off into the distance. About two hours from me, there's a squall line coming my way. And the wind's starting to pick up now. Maybe less than two hours now. It's got a lot of red and white in it. That can't be good, from what I can tell on the radar. It'll probably last till about midnight. Not a big deal. I can find a low in the activity, break the camp down, and hike out of here. <laughs> now remember, well, I guess uh, from you, for those of you who've never followed my channel, from where I'm at, I'm along the Missouri River, and where the mountain is parked is 40 minutes away, hiking through that there's there's no trails here you just kind of cut your own path type of situation that's why i love it here camp breakdown time if i'm just screwing around 20 minutes in a storm i can get it down 10 or less <laughs> perfectly good fire anyway here's the dilemma i'm under the trekking tuesday protocol for those of you that know don't know what that is is i have a curfew set by jessica if I am late, late, I get in trouble. <laughs> a lot of trouble. Here's the second problem. I don't have self service where I'm at. That's why I carry a two meter with me. I can hit the repeater and probably send her a message, but she's still gonna be not happy with me. So do I stay, ride the storm out and enjoy it, then go home and go through hell? Do I break the camp down and get out before the rain hits, hopefully, and live to camp another day? Tough call. As you can tell, I decided to live to camp another day. Let me show you where I came from. 
Uh, you can't see the dark sky, I guess. Maybe you can a little bit. And let me show you where we're going. We need to navigate through this mess right here. And right to a freaking spider. God bless America. <laughs> and there's another one. Oh, you love it. Got it. Yep. I just ate it. That's not good. I think that's too thick to go through. Uh, yeah, we can get through here. I'll go through this direction. It shouldn't be too, too bad. Can you imagine doing this in the dark? That's when your navigational skills really pay off. Take four. I'm very terrible at filming today. I wonder why. We made it to that mess. I am good. I'm back on a somewhat trail. You can kind of in the distance. Well, you can't see it through the camera, but the sky is dark there. And if we look this way, see the river? It's clear. Maybe some clouds. Did I make the right choice? Probably. <laughs> There's nothing like drying your gear out overnight. That's always fun. And really didn't want to get in trouble when I got home anyway. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. And look at that. Look at all the freaking spider webs. I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. There's really not much to see unless something weird happens, which I pretty much doubt. I'd like to thank everybody for sticking around through my little situation. Oh my God. That was a monster. And the cobweb I just ate. <laughs> Oh boy, hopefully I'll get back to the videos this fall going into the winter. Comments are always welcome. Heads up, it's going to take me a while to answer as usual. And like always friends, thanks for watching. It's been quite a while and this is going to be like take five. I was that? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, tree just fell over. <laughs>